Hi everyone, my name is Nick and it's finally time for another houseplant tour. It's been a little while since I filmed a full tour of my home. Last I counted, I had a little over 460 houseplants and I can tell you after filming the main part of the houseplant tour that I definitely missed a handful of those plants, but I don't think I'll be lying if I said it would be a 450 plus houseplant tour video, and I am going to single out every single one of those except for the ones that I missed um, and tell you the name of them, and uh, if applicable, I will put the name on screen as well for you guys to see, which most of them it will include. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot to see. I'm really excited to show you guys. It's going to be a long video, so this will be in two parts. Uh, the first part showing uh, the living room and the kitchen, second part showing the bedroom and the bathroom. So there are definitely really cool plants in each room that you will definitely want to keep an eye out for. So I really hope you guys enjoy this houseplant tour video. There's definitely a lot to see, so sit back, relax, maybe grab a snack, and enjoy. We're going to start today's houseplant tour in the kitchen, and just so you guys can get a better idea of how my home is laid out, if I turn to my right, you're going to see the living room, and then if I turn to the left, you're going to see the hallway that goes down to the bedrooms and the bathroom. It's pretty sunny out today. Hopefully there's not a lot of glare. Uh, but I think we're going to be able to get through this. So starting on top of the refrigerator, there's a ZZ plant, or Zamia colchis Zamia folia. There's also a Syndapsis pictus growing up behind it. It's not receiving a lot of light, so uh, the lower growth, or the older growth is not very happy, but the newer growth is doing okay. If we move back over, there is a Chinese evergreen, or uh, Aglaonema commutatum silver bay, and there's also another Chinese evergreen right behind it. And I think this is just the standard commutatum. A uh, type of Sansevieria right here with some yellow edging, a monstera leaf that is just in water as if cut like a flower, a Raphidophora tetrasperma or mini monstera, there's also a Ripsalis flocasa that goes all the way down here. Also coming down the side of the refrigerator is a Peperomia trinervis, I'm really a big fan of this Peperomia, and also a Piperinum pinatum cebu blue or the cebu blue pothos. And if we move down next to the sink, I have right here a Peperomia verticillata. I think this is the belly buttons cultivar. And then a Peperomia clusiifolia red margin. And then hiding behind the Cebu blue pothos is this Peperomia incana. Also, there is a Sansevieria trifasciata hanii down there. If we move over to the other side of the sink, I have this Peperomia albovitata rana verde. Also, a Peperomia fraseri. This is not doing too well. I think this one needs more of like a greenhouse condition. It keeps putting off like babies um, and then the old growth keeps dying back. So I need to do something about this. It's clearly not happy here like the other peperomias are. Also an Apicia cupriata. I don't know the exact cultivar. I think it might be Silver Skies or it's something similar to that. Uh, Kalanchoe blossfeldiana. This is an orange blooming one. A Coffee arabica. It's not really doing too hot. So I'm probably gonna move it somewhere else and maybe move another plant here. But I thought it'd be kind of appropriate to have a coffee plant in the kitchen. Sansevieria masoniana, this is the whale fin Sansevieria, and then a Ficus elastica burgundy, or the rubber tree. Moving up onto these shelves, I have a Cissus rhombifolia, and this is, I think, the Ellen Danica, or something similar to that. It's the, the oak leaf variety. And then on top is a Peperomia argyria, or the watermelon Peperomia, and then also a uh, Philodendron scandens, I think, or there's many names for that plant, but it's just the standard heart leaf Philodendron. And then above it, I have a mounted orchid up there, and speaking of which, if I turn Behind me, I also have another mounted orchid that is about to bloom, which is really exciting because I, I'm really excited to see this one. It has purple flowers, and when the flowers come down, I think it's going to be really enjoyable. I actually just mounted this orchid in the last few months. I also have some air plants right here. This is a Tillandsia harissii, and then below that I have a Tillandsia ionantha, and there is some Spanish moss growing on this as well, Tillandsia eucinoides, but it's pretty much de uh, dead. I think I just really put it here for decoration. If I move back over to the kitchen window, I have hanging inside the window, this is a Deschidia acuminata. And then behind this, where I might as well just show you this string of pearls right now, or the, the Sinitio, I think the name's actually been changed, but we're gonna call it Sinitio rallianus. But behind that, I have a Hoya lacunosa. It's gonna be pr probably a little difficult to see that and some of the other plants behind there. And then all the way up top, uh, it's going to be really difficult to see that, but that's a, a Hoya, I think it's Wayetii, or maybe it's Kentiana, I'm not too sure, but we're going to say it's Hoya Wayetii for the sake of this video. And then I'm going to move down and do the windowsill first before we get uh, too caught up with what's up high. So this is a Lispismium cruciform right here. It's got some really lovely new growth. I really uh, love the shape of these leaves. It's pretty um, undulate. It's really nice, or wavy is what that means. And then uh, Kalanchoe tomentosa. This is a very fuzzy 
uh, Kalan Kobe, <laughs> Tomentos is what that means, fuzzy Tomentos. Um, then right down here, uh, Cryptanthus bivitatus. This is a pink one or the pink star variety. Then we have uh, Xerocysios dengai behind that, which is the, the silver dollar vine, I believe. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm going to have to recite all of these to you guys. It's going to be really a test of my memory. Um, Crassula ovata right here, or a jade plant. This is a Sansevieria Kirkii copper tone. It's actually, these leaves look a little dry, so I probably need to maybe uh, move this to a different situation. I was thinking from the, the colora coloration of this plant that it might appreciate a southern-facing window, but... I think this might be telling me otherwise. Then behind that, that is a blue cactus. I actually forget the name of it, but it's some type of Sirius. And then there is a Senecio or Kleinia is the new name for it, Stapelii formis back there, or a pickle plant. In here, I'm not going to label this one exactly, but this is three types of Kalankoe, uh, or Mother of Thousands, in this pot. And then I'm holding back that Hoya carii, or the Heartleaf Hoya, right here. It's got some lovely new growth actually coming in in two spots, which is really exciting. And then hiding right here is a Peperomia columella. And then also another type of Peperomia. This is, uh, which one is this? This is Peperomia dolibriformis. Then down here I have a, what is this? Um, oh gosh, I just said one that's similar. The name is, what was it? Senecio stapelia. Stapelia. It's a stapelia. No, it's not a stapelia. It's a Hawarnia. Hawarnia Sabrina. Sorry, I'm wasting time with that. And I also have a Ripsalis. Gotta focus in on that one. Ripsalis prismatica, just in a small one inch pot. And then there's actually another Ripsalis right in front of that, or behind it, I guess. It's a Ripsalis pentaptera. And then that is the stapelia. This is a stapelia. I actually don't know. Uh, the cultivar. It's, I'm told it's a, a rare one from the person who gave it to me, but I, I can't be certain until it blooms. And I don't really want it to bloom because apparently they're kind of stinky. There's another type of Kalankoe back here. I actually forget the, the species name of that one. And then another Peperomia right here. This is Peperomia graviolens. Sometimes they call it the Ruby Glow Peperomia. And there's a Fairy Castle Cactus. I think it's an Acanthocereus trigonus. I might be getting that wrong. And some type of Haworthia down there as well. I forget the exact... Uh, species of that Haworthia. For moving up a little bit more, there is a Tillandsia tectorum that I have on this little mount. You can see I actually just kind of like make like little hooks. I make these myself. I just kind of like put like wood on it, glue it on, um, and hide the glue with moss, and then just set the air plants on. And I think it's kind of a fun, natural way to grow air plants. Maybe I'll have to do a tutorial on how I make it. And then there is a Dishidia. Sorry, I'm noticing that glare right now. I want to kind of take care of that. Dishidia oeantha is what the grower says that this one is. And then right on the window here, there's Nathana capensis. I actually have a number of succulents growing along the window and cacti. They're all rather small and a little insignificant because I have other ones around the home. So I'm actually going to skip those, but I do have a bunch of plants growing right there. And then there's a Kalankoe uniflora right here. It's a, a trailing Kalankoe, which is rather interesting. And then I have, it's up high as well, but I'm going to show you down here, this uh, Senecio uh, macroglossus variegatus, which they call the wax ivy. I also have a Seropegia woodii variegata. Let me get this better. You can see it really nice here. So this is the variegated string of hearts. It's rather long. It started as a really small plant. I'm really proud of this one, actually. And then I have... Uh, Epiphyllum, I think. Epiphyllum. Oh, I can't remember. It's the Rick Rat Cactus. I can't remember the exact name. Or there's a bunch of different varieties. But I also have a Ripsalis up here, which of course I can't remember exactly. I think it's Ripsalis bicifera. I think it's a specific variety of bicifera. Correct me in the comments if you know. And then I have another type of Ripsalis. This is Ripsalis pilocarpa up here. So that's pretty much everything in the kitchen. I'm just gonna kind of back up to show you guys this window from full. Oh my gosh, it's already eight minutes in. This is going to be a long video. All right, so we're going to move over to this little uh, nook right here, which gets some really bright light, and I grow a bunch of plants in here. So I have some more Ripsalis right here. Oh, thank you for that car honk. Um, I have, oh, I don't even know which kind this is, actually. I'm horrible with my Ripsalis. I, I feel like if you guys have watched my last houseplant tours, I probably, like, to the T, you know, like, all of my plants, but we're getting to the point now. We have, we have a bunch of them. I'm not really too positive on them. Um, do let me know if you guys are sure. It looks very similar to Pilocarpa, but I think it's some type of Bicifera, if I'm not mistaken, but there are a lot of Ripsalis, and I am not really familiar. Another Ripsalis right here, Ovaldiana, Ripsalis Ovaldiana. Then moving up to the top shelf, I have a Hoya Carnosa Crimson Princess. Let me get a little bit more focused. Then there's an Aeschgenanthus longicollis, or longicollis, a Pipernum aureum, the golden pothos. There is a Philodendron 
dubium or radiatum. I can't remember what the exact name is of that one is. And then just moving over a little bit, I have the neon pothos, another type of epipronum aureum. There is a little jar, um, and I have some Syndapsis pictus silvery ann in it, and I also have a little bit more of the Epipernum aureum Cebu blue. And then next to that, I have an actual pot of Syndapsis pictus argirius. And then next to that, I have Hoya shepardii. Just going to move back before I go down. I have my Platycerium bifurcatum, and then a Asplenium uh, nidus crispy wave, and a crocodile fern. I forget, I think it's, oh gosh, I can't remember the exact name. The, the cultivar is Crocodilus, which is fun because you can see from below how the leaves look like crocodile skin, and that's actually why I mounted it up pretty high on my wall because I just really like seeing it from below. All right, now we're gonna move down. I still have a lot more to share with you guys. This is gonna be a long video, so buckle up. This is another type of uh, Ficus elastica. This is the, the green variety. I think this might be called Robusta, or maybe it's just a species. I'm really not too sure. Uh, let me know if you're aware. We have Muffin right here saying hello. Muffin, come say hello. You never get to say hello to the camera. Muffin, sweetie, come here. Hi, sweets. Oh my goodness. This is a muffin. I'm not too sure on her species. All right, getting back to our video, because that's what this is about. Um, this is a Raphidophora decursiva right here. I think this is where I left off. Down here, I have a type of epiphyllum. Oh, I totally forget what type of epiphyllum. I think it's epiphyllum hookeri. And then this is a philodendron red back. If I flip it over, it's got some nice, slightly red backsides of the leaves. This is Schifflera actinophila. This is either a mate or a... Uh, what is it called? Alpine? I can't remember exactly. I think it's Amate, but it could be Alpine. The difference is Amate is more uh, tree-like and the um, Alpine is more columnar in the way that it grows, but I'm not too positive. And then I have a Philodendron Mayoi down here, which you might also see as Philodendron Tahiti. Uh, Philodendron Arubicins Red Emerald right here. This is a rather nice size plant. I actually would really like to get this a larger pot and a larger pole for it to climb up because I don't really like the situation that I have right now. Okay, so now I have this display right here and I'm just gonna step back and show you guys how this looks. Also, you can kind of see how this looks carrying over into the kitchen. If I kind of just step back and then I'll give you guys a look over here. Alrighty, so we gotta tackle this mess. It's a very beautiful mess, if I do say so myself. We're gonna start down low. I have a Peperomia tetragona, which is also parallel Peperomia. It's, and I just moved it here. I just did this crate uh, thing within the month, and I honestly don't really have a place to put this Peperomia, and I don't have the heart to get rid of it, but it's gonna look like we need to move this plant. So we'll take care of that after this video. Then I have a Peperomia kimnachii right there. Sorry, we're going to get a little bit of glare right now. All right, and then I have a Peperomia. This was sold to me as bamboo stalks. I'm not convinced it's bamboo stalks. I'm convinced it's just Peperomia glabella. Um, and then I have a Pepper. I'm um, sorry, a Hoya. This was given to me as Sangii, but the name has changed. I think it's uh, Hoya affinity to Bertonii or Bertoniae. I don't know I don't remember exactly how to pronounce it. Then I have a begonia. I forget exactly. It's like frosty, maybe the cultivar. And then another Sansevieria Kirkii copper tone. And that one is putting off new growth. So maybe I should take a note from this one. And then a Sansevieria cylindrica bonkle or the starfish Sansevieria. Okay, we're moving up. We got a lot more to go, guys. I'm gonna say that probably a lot. Begonia maculata whitei. It's got some red backsides of the leaves. It's rather nice. Hoya pubicalix, uh, pink silver. This is a Syngonium macrophyllum. And then I have a Begonia medora right here. This is a rather wild growing angelwing begonia. I definitely recommend it if you like angelwing begonias. Uh, Philodendron imbi variegata. I think this might be also called the Cozy Boano. Uh, what is this called? Syngonium protophyllum albo variegatum. I think it's gatum and not gatus or gata. I'm going to go with Gatum. Um, then Peperomia Pereschii folia right here. This is a rather nice one. I actually have this growing in a sconce, which is fun. Or like a, it was part of a sconce. It's not the entire sconce, obviously, because there's no part to go on the wall. Uh, Hoya abavada, starting to put up some new growth. I'm a really big fan of this Hoya. It's really beautiful. And then a Hoya lacunosa. I think this is snow caps. 
And then we're going to move over here. I have a Monstera Siltipicana. It's kind of going up and wild, if you can see, which is really fun. Then a Thematophyllum by Panatophytum. Definitely has some perlite on it from some spillage from above. And a Sansevieria Hollii. And then a Cissus Rotundifolia. This definitely needs a drink back here. Asparagus Retrofractus. Hoya... Um, what is this? Hoya, ugh, my God, it's so common. Hoya macrophylla albo marginata. And then there is a peperomia incana, one of my favorite peperomias. It's very fuzzy. Uh, it's really fun. It's a really fun peperomia. And then a euphorbia garoldii, which is the um, thornless crown of thorns. This thing has been flowering like crazy for me ever since I got it in my home. What else do we have? Aloe vera. And then there's a Kalanchoe digramentia, or I can't remember exactly how to pronounce it, but that one's back there. It's mother of thousands. And then Peperomia caparata ruby raspberry ripple. That's it. Rips. Oh, no, no, I keep. I feel like I'm start calling everything a ripsalis, or maybe at least a few things that are not ripsalis. Like I start saying ripsalis. This is a cryptanthus. It's an absolute zero. I'm kind of trying to nurse it back to health. It's not really doing too hot since I repotted it. And then a Ficus elastica ruby right here. We're gonna get a lot of glare in this window, I think. So I'm gonna just step back and point them out to you guys. This is a Deschidia russifolia. There's a Hoya kentiana variegata right here. There is a Hoya sunrise in here. I'll get a little close up on that one for you guys to see. It's not gonna really come up pretty well though. And then I have a uh, Bretonia shelob tolkien, another Cystis rotundifolia, and then a type of epiphyllum. I totally forget the exact. Uh, kind it's got a big purple flower okay let's move over to our microwave desk we have to do something about this in the near future there is a microwave in the middle of our living room one day we're going to use this as a desk that day is not today and that is okay um let's start over here this is a hoya pubicalyx i think this one is the splash then i have a philodendron hostata this actually had a little bit of thrips coming in on the new leaves so i just got some um captain jacks to spray it to take care of it it'll do a good job so I might just actually cut off the sleeve because it's just not looking good to my liking and I can see another one coming in there so I can just you know snip this off when I have clean shears. Hoya Carnosa Crimson Queen back here or it's kind of growing into my hostatum I guess. I have a Begonia My Special Angel larger as well not all down there. This is a Philodendron Mexicanum new leaf right here. Monstera Adansonii on the four foot moss pole. Getting a little glare, I'm sorry. Epipernum pinatum Cebu blue. We're on top of the microwave now. There's a little tiny per, uh, Peperomia pereschii folia here. P uh, Hoya iris marie, Tradescantia spathaceae variegata. Stromanthi sanguinea. There's a Ripsalis right here. I forget the name of this. I think it was actually mislabeled when I purchased it. Um, and then a Hoya crinkles tinkles is a rather fun name. This is a um, Raphidophora heii, or heii, just heii, and then a Sansevieria cylindrica back here. Sansevieria trifasciata, then if I move up, there's an Ischgenanthus longicollis again, longicollis, I think I keep calling it by, with a hard G, um, but it's a, it's a soft G, I think. Then there is a Peperomia scandens variegata and a Philodendron brantiana, which I can't tell. This leaf looks like it's not good, so maybe I'm going to try something else out in this area because that one, maybe it's not doing too well. All right, we're going to move over. I have this lovely Marin TC print from Aaron Apsley, and I have my circle shelf, which looks exactly the same since forever. Honestly, nothing goes on here. It's a little too far from this west facing window to get adequate lighting so we just got to deal with what we have there's a hoya affinity to bertonier and then a cutting of a pepperonum pinatum subu blue there is a peperomia caparata i just keep buying peperomia caparatas and putting them up there and they die honestly i don't know why i keep doing it but they just look really good so uh and of course a dying ripsalis pilocarpa i can't even tell you the last time i watered it i'm so forgetful with the shelf i'm gonna admit to you guys like I, i'm pretty hands off with the shelf uh, Sansevieria Arenbergii, I think it is. It's the, the Samurai Sansevieria. And then there's just a little ZZ plant that I actually grew from the leaf cutting. And then for moving over to the bookcase and this western facing window over here, we're going to start on the top. I have a ZZ plant back there. It's just one I've had forever and I like thought I killed it years ago and it's, it's just coming back to life and I don't have the heart to get rid of it. Uh, Philodendron Imperial Red. 
and there is a kind of a mess over here in the the face pot there is a tradescantia Scylla montana and then there's a string of hearts going all the way down here it's going up someone I've had for a really long time. It's actually still in its plastic nursery pot. And then another type of Tradescantia right here. This is a uh, Polita, Tradescantia Polita. Moving into the bookcase, I have a Diphenbachia. I think it's Tiki is the, the cultivar. And then another one of those uh, Aglinema Camutatums, Maranta Lucanura Kirchoviana. This is a Philodendron Scandens, but it's the lemon lime version. And a pothos, a piperinum aureum, just the golden pothos, and some dead air plants. Muffin, can I help you? Can I help you, sweet pea? What do you want? What do you want? Okay, well, I'm gonna go back to filming then. Okay, so since we were rudely interrupted, just a little resurrection plant right there, not even really worth talking about. It's not really alive. But um, Aglianema, I think this is Silver Queen. Some type of cryptanthus down there, and that is nothing because that is where we burn our incense. This is a Syngonium chia pence. I actually just recently moved it here from underneath the grow light. It's been growing really, really well for me, and I'm hoping that it's going to grow well here because I think it looks really good in that yellow pot. Hoya carnosa, uh, Sansevieria bantel sensation. This is a Pilea peperomioides. Do you guys remember when these plants were like all the rage? I feel like it feels like it was forever ago. I mean, it was like a year ago, but it feels like it was a long time ago. Uh, Sansevieria Gold Flame back there. This one's kind of hiding behind this Hoya Macrophylla Alba Marginata. I remember it this time. Then I have Peperomia Elongata down here. Muffin, I am trying to film a video. I love you to death, sweet pea, but I don't know what you want. Use your words. Can I help you? Can I help you? Sweetie! Oh, now I have to go say hello to her! Hi, sweets! Ah. I love you, sweet pea. Okay, I'm getting really distracted. We have a lot more to do. Um, what did we just leave off? Okay, there's a Peperomia Peresciae folia right here. And then a Hoya Numelarioides? Numelaria? I can't remember. I think it's Numelarioides. And then a Sansevieria Trifasciata White Stripe or White Streak. I can't remember the name. This is my uh, Mystery Monstera. It's just got some green variegation. It looks kind of yellow in the light. It's not the Aria Marmorata. Um, I don't know exactly what it is. It's just a sport, really. Um, and then another Sansevieria Cylindrica uh, Bonkel. Moving up into this window, this is actually just a piece of Raphidophora decursiva. I don't even know if it's rooting. I actually, yeah, it is rooting a little bit. It's, it doesn't have much going on, but um, Ficus repens right here, really beautiful plant. And there's a Pelionia repens right behind it. How funny, they actually have very similar foliage, which is probably explains why their Latin name is very similar. Uh, Peperomia tetragona up there. And then there is a Selenocereus uh, chrysocardium or the fishtail cactus, I think they call it. And, oh my gosh, I feel like it's not called the fishtail. I think it is called the fishtail. Okay, we're going to move on. Uh, Peperomia prostrata, prostrata, and then there's Peperomia polybotria also growing in that pot. And then there's some Tradescanthia spathaceae variegata up there. If you guys are still watching this video, like, kudos to you. You are very interested in plants, and I'm very proud of that. This is a Tetrastigma voinierianum, or the chestnut vine, I think they call it. I really love this plant. Really beautiful great hanging basket plant. This is a Monstera. Uh, they, I think this is the Peru, Monstera Peru. And then a Thematophyllum right here. This is Thematophyllum sprucianum. They used to call this one Philodendron goldii. And very similar looking. Uh, this is Schifflera actinophila amate. And then I have an Apicia cupriata. Once again, I'm not really sure of the cultivar of this, uh, but I really love it. And then a Peperomia kimnachii back there. Sorry, arm getting in the way. And then I just have a cutting of Adansonii that I actually have just growing in some Leca. We're going to move over. Actually, we're going to move down. Muffin, sweet pea. Hi. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I, it's so annoying the way I talk to my cat. I'm trying it again because I think the cat was sniffing the microphone. This is my terrarium. And I know it's a total mess back there if you didn't hear me already say. But this is... Um, Asparagus Myra, I think it is, and then Apicia cupriata once again, not really doing too hot in the terrarium, and then um, Pelionia, the watermelon Pelionia. And then if we move over here, we're going to stop and see this Trichilia emetica, or the um, Natal mahogany. It does really well in the interior space. Muffin, you're going crazy. Oh my god. Okay, 
Moving on, I just have some Epipernum aureum growing up this trellis right here. Really fun, really easy uh, plant to grow. Then some Syndapsis picked this silvery Anne, which I actually oh, running into my table. Um, Syndapsis picked this silvery Anne, which I have growing all the way around. It's doing really well. And then moving down, I have this Ficus Audrey. I think it's Ficus bengalensis is the, the species. This is a little Philodendron pink princess I'm just growing out from a little piece that I took forever ago. Uh, this is Peperomia glabella. You can see why I thought that one that was bamboo stalks, quote unquote, um, looks very similar to this. And then a Plectranthus ernstii, which is getting very bulbous at the base, which is very fun. There is a Sansevieria honey eye, golden honey eye, I think it is. Sansevieria trifasciata golden honey eye. You can see how a mess my windowsills are because I do not do a very good job. And then there is a Sansevieria, I think this is black gold, I want to say. And then a type of Ripsalis down here. I don't remember what kind it is. This is a Ficus altissima. And then I have a Hoya australis growing on this little teepee that I had kind of rigged up and then I have also a ficus elastica tiniki there's this plain variegated ficus elastica moving up I gotta get up on the couch actually let's start right over here real quick I have a dishidia I think this is dishidia, dishidia oeantha just like that one I had on that plaque and then oh goodness and the cat starts playing um, I have an oncidium orchid cherry baby is what it is and then it's a total mess on this window I used to have a bunch of plants on here and I clearly have not cleaned it up but there's a type of uh, epiphyllum I forget what the why well, it starts with like an A or something and then there is a peperomia red Ecuador back there I have a peperomia quadrangularis right here let's back in focus looks really really good and then the peperomia boivinii right here looks very similar to peperomia hope but it's got some bluer foliage and this is uh, a peperomia aureum mandula and a hoya obscura right here and then lastly in the window there is this lovely cissus quadrangularis which does not have any foliage on it because it is still winter then if i move over you guys can see me hi oh god you can see i'm in my sweatpants um this is a cissus adenopoda some really beautiful purple on the back side and then this is a philodendron squamiferum with the red bristly uh, petioles which is really nice Okay, so now we're going to move on to the Wally Grow. They're all doing pretty well. There's a little bit of a gap right here. The um, Bonnie spider plant, the Chlorophytum uh, Camosum Bonnie, clearly didn't do very hot, so i got to replace that. But I'm going to push over this Epipernum aureum, as you can see, to show you guys the Syndapsis pictus and the Syngonium podophyllum pink butterfly, I think it is, and those are both doing pretty well in this condition. A little bit more of the Epipernum aureum, some Philodendron scandens, um, Epipernum pinatum cebu blue, um, more golden pothos, and then this is a Dracaena marginata, I think it's tricolor, maybe, variegata, I'm not too sure. Um, this one is probably the one that's not doing the best out of all of the Wally Grows. It's definitely the furthest one away from light, um, but there's a little bit of Philodendron right here, not doing too hot. Um, but the Syndapsis and the Aglianema Ruby are doing really well. I really like the way this one looks from below. And there's just like a little bit of like Syngonium Podophyllum in there as well, a little bit of Cissus Rhombifolia. And then last but not least, I have uh, this Aglianema, I think it's Spring Snow, also looks really good from below. And then the Tenanthi Citosa, and that one is really dramatic with the way that it folds up as leaves it sleeves up and down throughout the day which is rather fun and we're moving over to the plant corner let me guys give you a better look i'll guys also give you a better look of the living room once we finish up but just so you guys can get an idea of what i'm moving into we're gonna start with this terrarium right here so this is a peperomia pneumalaria and then a oh there's that pilea involucrata and then there's actually a little bit of um philodendron red king i think it is down there and you guys can see how dusty it is over here this is a raphidophora tetrasperma on a trellis there's actually two of them growing on the trellis well there's a lot more than one vine obviously but there's two pots and then a talansia stricta uh philodendron arubicens pink princess got some really beautiful leaves on this one and hiding below the raphidophora is a philodendron black cardinal 
This is a Spathophyllum, what is this one? Spathophyllum domino. And then I have a Calathea orbifolia right here. This is Homolamina emerald gem. It's got some lovely new leaves coming in, as you can see. This is Aglaonema red emerald. Monster Deliciosa Albo Variegata. It doesn't have the fenestrations or the splits in the leaves yet, so it does look a little bit different. Um, and then Anthurium Superbum. It's got a really lovely new leaf coming in. That's really exciting. I actually didn't know about that. Um, Hoya, gosh, you can see the name right there. Van Nyong Nyoi. God, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but it's better than me saying Nagong Nagoi. Um, some really lovely new growth in this. I'm really excited. I got a new leaf right here. Hoya... Um, Carnosa, what is this? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hoya Carnosa Compacta. That's it. That's the Hoya Hindu rope. Um, Amidrium Zippelianum. Zippelianum. And then another Philodendron Myoi right here. And I think that's everything in this corner. So, last for the living room, we're going to go over to the bar cart area, which is not in focus. Alrighty, there we go. But the bar cart area. And I am going to just briefly turn around and show you guys hopefully without that little bit of glare the living room oh no it's not going to go away but yeah just kind of a mess honestly we're, we're in a bit of a transition period here in at home um we're trying to just work on a few areas like the microwave table perhaps <laughs> um and make them look a little bit better and a little bit more cohesive like you know some of these other areas do per se um okay so the bar car area oh my gosh i'm seeing how long this video is already we need to hurry up this is a calathea fasciata i believe and then i have a tenanthi um amigri amigris amigri i'm pretty sure and then a Calathea rufabarba, nice, lovely purple behind, and um, very fuzzy. It's a little Philodendron brantianum cutting growing in the water here. Homolamina selby, Peperomia scandens, Peperomia scandens once again. This is actually a sport that I am trying out in my home. This is Peperomia meridiana, Hoya retusa, Hoya pubicalix splash, Hoya cow yai. This is um, Syngonium erythrophyllum, uh, Yano Carti Road, really lovely wine red undersides. Another Raphidophoric decursiva right here. Philodendron domesticum, although it might actually be hostatum, I don't really know. Uh, Philodendron tripartitum up there, you can see it going all around. And then a Philodendron pedatum as well. Oh gosh, is that a bug? No, it's dust. Okay, we're good. Um, <laughs> this is uh, Monstera Peru. And then I also have a... Oh, it's a little light over here. Um, I have the Syndapsis Trubii Moonlight. Monstera Adansonii. So sorry about all that sunlight. There's absolutely nothing I can do. Uh, Santeveria Trifasciata Laurentii down here. And then a Philodendron Burl Marks. Moving up, I have a Hoya Pubicalix Royal Hawaiian Purple, and I also have a Peperomia Scandens Variegata. There is a lovely bouquet, actually, that my coworker Marley made. She's wonderful. And a Sansevieria Trifasciata Moonshine, as well as a Zamiacolcus Zamiafolia Zamicro. Syndapsis pictus silver, no, Syndapsis pictus, blah, 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 Syndapsis pictus exotica, and a uh, Epipetum aureum jade. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how many of these I remembered. I actually have another uh, Aaron Apsley print right here. I really love it. Philodendron gloriosum. Okay, now we're going to move down to the bathroom. Let's do this. If you've stuck around this far, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed all the plants that part one has to offer. Uh, I hope you're looking forward as well to see what plants I have hiding in my bedroom in my bathroom, but you are going to have to stick around for about a week or and a half, I would say. Uh, I do have a few more plant videos I plan on sandwiching in between uploading these houseplant tours just to keep it a little bit more interesting and honestly to give me a little bit more time to edit part two because there is a lot of editing when I make these plant videos because I have to just do a lot of uh, captions. It's really all the editing I have to do, but it takes a long time. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.